Hi everyone, for those of you wondering, this is the little hellion that caused all of my problems last week. And now, on to our regularly scheduled video. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica, and I'm still trying to decide what to call this podcast because yes, I've succumbed and it's actually going to be a podcast. I'm going to try to do a video every week. Um... Yeah, I just, I don't know, I like the idea. I'm still going to do the the written posts on my blog. Um, I like doing those. Um, I'm using my blog as kind of a portfolio when it's on my resume. So um, I still want to have the written posts up there, but I will definitely be doing more video posts. Um, people seem to like it from the few comments I got and from what people told me in person. Um, and so I'm going to continue to do it. And I have, I'm using my Nook show notes. I have all my stuff here and you can't actually see any of it on camera but it's all here. Uh, everything's within like an arm's reach or a lean over or whatever so I, I'm all prepared. Um, so I actually meant to do this during daylight hours and I'm all washed out again from moving the light from back there. It used to be over there, over here. I moved it over here um, because I planned to do this during the day but then this morning on my way to to the doctor's office, um, I got a call about a one-week temp job, and I wasn't going to turn it down. It's in town. It's for a week. It start, started today, and it ends next Wednesday, and it's for, you know, eight hours a day. Um, the pay's not bad. It's not the greatest, but it's not bad. Um, and so I'm doing a bit of data entry and just random stuff. So I said yes, of course, because I'm not stupid. And I went there starting at 1, so I was there from 1 to 5, which is when I'd originally planned to record, because the daylight would have been coming in the window really nicely, and I wouldn't be all washed out and pink and I look like a ghost or something. It's not good. So, um, yeah. I also had an interview yesterday down in Cambridge, which I live in New Hampshire. I live in southern New Hampshire, and so Boston was is within driving distance. Now, distance... Yes. Time, on the other hand, can take you, it, it, it can take you up to three hours if it's rush hour. So, you know, things are a little crazy. But I was going into Cambridge, which is next to Boston. So I went in. I took a placement test. Hopefully I hear back. Fingers crossed. And yes, I can cross four sets, five sets of fingers. Um, <laughs> and uh, I get that one, too, because that's a work-from-home position, and I wouldn't have to do the commute in, which would be great, because that's a horrible commute horrible. Um, but so yeah, I had that yesterday, I had this start today, so hopefully, you know, I can get some overlap going here, or I can start one right after the other, you know, I hope I get a call back. You never know though, but we'll see. Um, but so that really excited me. But it was funny yesterday driving in, because I'm driving through Cambridge, and I'm following my GPS, which means I don't know where I'm going, because I don't know Cambridge at all. I know my hometown, I know how to get certain places in Mass, I know how to get to like the Museum of Science in Boston, but I don't know Cambridge. And all of a sudden I realize I'm driving through Harvard. Yes, that Harvard. The Harvard. And I'm like, oh wait, this is Harvard. And I'm looking around going, that's why all the buildings have like all these red plaques saying what the building is and why they're named funny things. And I'm just like, oh, it's Harvard, okay. And then I was passing like all these gorgeous Victorians. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. The painting, the colors, they were all painted because back in the day, the Victorians weren't all somber with their house color paints. I mean, they were like bright blue and yellow and green. And I mean, the Victorians painted their houses weird colors. Not colors we paint today. But a lot of them in the in the Cambridge Boston area still are kept those like crazy colors. And so um it was really cool driving past them and seeing all of them and, and I just got to do this neat little tour of architecture. And like I drove past a school that had like a sunken um playground. So like it was like two stories below street level, which I thought was really neat. Um just driving past all these different things. And like when I left I went past the um Everyone just calls it the Garden and the Zakum, but it's the TD Bank Garden, which used to be the Boston Garden, but everyone just calls it the Garden. And then there's the Zakum, which is the something Zakum Bridge. The guy's got a first name, but I can never remember his last name. And everyone just calls it the Zakum. So, but I didn't actually end up on the Zakum. So I drove past the Garden, and I was on an on-ramp to 93, and I drove next to the Zakum, because Boston's weird like that, and we have all... This whole elevated highway system, if you know about the big dig, it was horrible then, 
Boston didn't get much better after the big day. <laughs> really, it didn't get any better. But anyways, I'm completely off topic. Um, sorry about the cut there, everyone. Um, it turns out I cannot touch my keyboard while I'm recording because I accidentally hit the space bar and it stopped recording. So you get a cut. Um, honestly, I don't remember where I was because I had to wait like 10 minutes for the video to process and then um, record a new video. So I completely lost my train of thought. I'm pretty sure I was blathering on about Boston or whatever. Um, but what I was going to do next, because I do have a list of things to do for the podcast. You can't see it, but there we go. Yay. I love Evernote. It's like the best thing ever. Um, <laughs> seriously. I don't even work for these people. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I love Evernote. It's great. Anyways, my boyfriend and I ordered Chinese for dinner. Ordered in. It's freezing cold. What's the temperature right now? According to my phone, it is 7 degrees. Nope, make that 6. See? 6 degrees and partly cloudy. Fun. Either way you look at it, it's cold. And yes, that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius, because if it was Celsius, it would be a hell of a lot warmer. Because um, it would actually be above freezing if it was Celsius. It's not above freezing. It's Fahrenheit. Um, but anyways, um, I had a fortune cookie with dinner, and I'm saving it because I actually like this one. I very rarely like them. They're usually kind of so-so. They're not really fortunes or whatever. But this one I liked. And it reads thusly. Do not wish to be anything but what you are, and try to be that perfectly. Which is kind of like the way I've always been. Um, I'm the kind of person that, you know, I am who I am, and if you don't like it, that's your problem. Um, I know that's not the nicest thing in the world to say, but I don't know. My mom raised me to be independent and free thinking and make decisions for myself and not be ashamed of who I am. And I kind of ended up that way. Um, it meant I didn't make the greatest friends when I was in school, but, you know, once I got to college, it got better. Um, grade school, uh, it was kind of mediocre. Um, but I did promise a list of podcasts, and I will put links and text in um, the post on my blog that goes under this video, because I'm going to embed the video, and then underneath it will be the list of blogs with the hyperlinks to the websites that the blogs are on. Now I have a whole bunch of knitting podcasts, and then I have two non-knitting podcasts. And I shall read you the list. The knitting slash crafting podcasts I follow are thus, in alphabetical order, because that's the only order I could think to put them in, because that's the thing I use to follow them, puts them in as alphabetical order. So 90% knitting, which I only just found this week, but I love it, it's great. Um, Electric Sheep. I like partially because she's quirky and British and partially because I really like her reference in the show name because um, I actually read in a science fiction class I took Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep and then we watched Blade Runner, the director's cut, um, and our professor was very specific that we watched the director's cut of Blade Runner. Not the theatrical, not any other cut, director's cut. Very, very specific about that. Um, so. Electric Sheep, the Electric um, Sheep screensaver is great. It's like these fractal patterns. Unfortunately, screensavers don't work on my computer, so I don't have it right now, but it's great. You can actually get it as like a live background for your Android phone. It's wonderful. Anyways, next up, the Nitpicks podcast. I listen to that on and off. It's kind of a, I feel like an I don't feel like it kind of thing, um, but I like it. Um, I like the interviews they do with designers and other people. Um, I find it very interesting. Um, the Knit More Girls podcast is also another recent we, recent one I started listening to. Um, I like the whole mother-daughter thing. Uh, but unfortunately, my mom doesn't craft enough right now for me to get her in on this. Plus, I don't think she'd like video out on the internet. But, yeah, you never know. I might be able to talk her into it um, a few times. She's more of a, a sewer and a quilter. And I do say sewer, not sewist, because to me, sewist sounds weird because I grew up hearing sewer. Um, so, and I consider myself, like... A very minor sewer. I sew a few things here and there. I have some curtains I have to make for a friend um, because the the closet, like not this closet, but the closet where they're moving into, um, doesn't have doors. Well, the doors are broken. It has doors, but they're broken. So we're putting up a curtain instead that you can, you know, push aside, whatever. And then not a podcast, which I've been listening to her for months now, and I love it. One goes up, I watch it 
almost immediately. I mean, I am on it like that. I mean, I love them. They're great. Ready, Set, Knit, which is the Web's weekly um, show. It's actually broadcast on the radio, and I think I can actually pick it up. I live actually close enough to Web's. Web's is like an hour and a half drive for me. It's not that bad, actually. I could just go for the day. I don't, because I don't really have the money. But I could just go to Web's for the day if I wanted. I'm close enough, because I'm in New England. And if you're in New England, unless you're like in like way, way up in Maine, you can pretty much get to Web's for the day. Um, Stitch Addiction Podcast. Another great one. Um, Stitch Addiction and Not a Podcast is where I got my 2015 Personal Sock Club idea from. They got it from someone else, but I got it from them. Um, so I blame them. Um, Traveling Sock Knitter, she's another one I watch kind of on and off again. I mean, I might miss a few episodes and then, like, binge watch a bunch of them. And then Yarngasm, um, I just recently started following as well, and I really like it. I really like her, too. Now, the non-knitting podcast, because so I'm including these two, because really, I'm such a horrible nerd geek whatever. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt. And that says it all, really. I'm wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt. And my boyfriend, my boyfriend has Gundams. And there's a uh, Neo figurine there. And there's Rony Kenshin. And um, yeah, we're anime fans. Um, my boyfriend's got, if I turn the chair this way, and I lean this way, and I point with this hand. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Those are Kevin's magic cards. Those four binders right there, they're three inch thick binders. They're full of his magic cards. And I have my own stack, like over there. Um, <laughs> we're horrible. We play D&D every two weeks. We have a game going on that we host here in the apartment. Yeah. Um, so anyways, non-knitting podcasts. Star Talk Radio. I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. I love his work. I love listening to him talk. I adored Cosmos when they were broadcasting it. I ordered the Blu-ray set, like with the bonus features and everything. It's great. I love the podcast. Um, it's really funny to listen to. It usually has comedians on helping him. Um, sometimes he'll get Bill Nye or other astronauts. Um, one interview he did this past season on his show, and it's an actual radio show in New York City. Like, you could listen to it on Sunday afternoons, but I'm not close enough to New York City to get the actual, like, FM broadcast, um, so I listen to it after the fact online. Um, he had the Mythbusters on, Adam Savage and Jamie Hyndman. Speaking of the Mythbusters, the other non-knitting podcast I follow is still untitled The Adam Savage Project. I originally found it um, when he posted it via, I think it was Facebook or something. He said he was starting this new project. And then I kind of drifted away from it for about a year. Um, and then I came back to it this year. Um, and I caught up on all the old episodes. You can either listen to it on audio through iTunes or you can go to the Tested.com website and actually watch the video. And I like watching the videos, even though I could totally listen to it in the car if I wanted to. Um, I like the videos because you get to see Adam's, it's not really a man cave, it's like his shop where he does all his creating and everything, but he has got so much stuff in the background. He's got like a 3PO and he's got Captain Kirk's chair from the original series, and he's got um, an R2-D2 with like the top dome part off, and he's got so much stuff. It's incredible. Like I love watching the video and like watching it in high def so I can actually look in the background and pick out stuff. I'm a horrible nerd. I know. I actually got to see the Mythbusters live when they came to Worcester, Mass. Dragged my boyfriend. It was a lot of fun. Actually, no, it wasn't Worcester, Mass. That was the How to Train Your Dragon Live Spectacular. That was Worcester. I dragged my boyfriend all the way down to Hartford, Connecticut, which is a full stay away, by the way. Mass is kind of in between here and there. And I dragged him to that all the way down to Hartford. He's a really good sport. He puts up with like all of my obsessions. Like I told him I was gonna shut the door, shut the door, and do this recording. He's like, I love you, and I'm just like, okay, you know. Um, he thinks I'm quirky, but he likes it. I mean, we're dating, obviously. It's been three and a half years. So, anyways, some actual knitting that would be good, wouldn't it? Because this is ostensibly a knitting podcast, right? So, um, I finished one sock of my personal sock club for January. One sock done. I cast off yesterday um, afternoon and I immediately cast on the next one. Um, as soon as I wove in the ends on this one, um, I immediately cast on the second sock because I am horrible with second sock syndrome and the um, second pair of socks I ever knit were the first sock was knit five months before the second sock. It took me five months to cast on the second sock. So I've never let myself 
succumb to second sock syndrome again. And I immediately, as soon as like I've woven in the ends and finished it, because I like to weave in the ends immediately. I mean, I leave a little tail so that after I've washed it, I can then snip the tail, but I leave, but I weave in everything. And then I immediately, let me put that down, cast on the second sock. And if you will notice, this toe, let me get my fingers out of the way, does not match this toe. You know why? The color repeat is so long, like it goes literally from here to, where is it? Where is it on here? It's like ridiculously long color repeats. Yeah, so color repeat from here to here. That's like the whole, all, that's almost the whole sock. I would waste so much yarn trying to make the stripes match. Normally I like matching stripes, but this time, no go. They're not going to match stripe-wise. You're going to know they're the same yarn. They're very distinctive, but no go. I have the bandage on this finger because I split it open on the car door. Yeah, when it's really cold, rubber apparently gets hard and you can hurt yourself with. That's what I get for not wearing gloves. Because um, I've taken them off in the car because I've gotten warm because I was in the car for like two hours yesterday morning. But my other finger is fine. The other finger is better. I have a smidge of a scab left, um, but it's more of a callus at this point. So, but I have the second sock on. I've actually finished the toe increases and I'm started, I've done like four rows of the foot of the sock. Now, when I originally learned to do socks, I learned to do cuff down, heel flat socks. And then I tried a pattern. It was my Scylla socks, which are in the other room where I showed them to you. Um, those I did toe up and I followed the pattern. I had, those were my first toe up socks. Um, I love them, they're great. Then, because of Kate at the Stitch Edition podcast, I found the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is the best dollar I have ever spent on a knitting pattern. I love it so much better than the heel flap because I actually have very narrow heels. Like, literally, I cannot wear um, pumps for shoes. I need a strap across the foot because my heel is so narrow, I will walk out of the shoe. It's actually a chronic problem with me in shoes. I have to have a strap across the foot to hold my foot into the shoe because my heel is so narrow. So the Fish Lips Kiss heel fits a lot better than the heel flap does. I mean, I still wear all my heel flap socks, so I mean, I'm not going to get rid of them. I put a lot of work into those things. I want them, right? But um, I like the Fish Lips Kiss heel a lot better than I like the heel flap. And, um, and I also developed my own generic like vanilla sock pattern. I figure, I think everyone develops one of these after a while. Um, I knit super tightly though. So like on a standard fingering weight, I'm at 70, 72 stitches on a US size one, which I know for some people is like super crazy tight. Also, I'm a thrower. I don't pick or continental. I'm an English style throwing knitter. Um, it's just what I do. I think part of it's because I'm left-handed and the way I develop my style is even though I'm a thrower, I'm moving everything with my right hand. And when I try moving everything with my left hand, but when I switch to continental, I have to move everything with my right hand and it just, my brain doesn't compute, compute it. It just, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Um, but so I normally do a, a cast on 20 stitches using, um, I think it's Jenny's magic cast on. Honestly, I don't remember the name. I know how to do it, but I don't remember what it's called. I'm sorry, it's one of those things, you know. And then I increase the toe to 72 stitches. And then I knit straight until I hit um, where I want the heel to begin. I do the fish lips kiss heel, which in this sock's case, I pull from the opposite end of the ball to preserve the stripe pattern continuity from the foot to the leg. Not that it really mattered because I'm not matching the stripes, but I like stripe continuity. What can you say? And then I knit until it's the length, it's almost the length I want, and then I do 20 rows of ribbing. These socks, however, because this yarn, it's this, um, I have the label right here. It's this opal yarn. Gonna focus. Nope, it's not focusing. Um, it's actually, it's almost a sport weight. It's like a heavy fingering. It really is. It's like a heavy fingering. It, it, there's no way it's a standard fingering weight. Because if it was a standard fingering weight, I'd be at 72 stitches, but I'm at 64. I had to cut back eight stitches in order to get this to fit my foot. 
and it's still a little loose. Um, and they're not going to shrink because they have the, the poly, polyamide, so they're not going to shrink. But they're good like bed socks, wear around the apartment socks. Um, so yeah, normally I do 72 stitches, but these are 64 because of the thickness of the yarn. Don't know why this yarn is so thick. It's labeled as fingering. Ravelry says it's fingering. The label says it's fingering. It's got to be a heavy fingering. There's no way it's like a regular fingering weight. It's, it's way too heavy for it. Um, I also decided to get in on some spinning. The, um, the Yarngasm podcast, she is hosting a, um, like it's, it's, she's calling it despackle. Um, it's, it's a, you drop spindle spin, a shawl's quantity worth of yarn, and then knit the shawl between now and April. I got in a few days late, but I had some spinning on my spindle, so I'm not really behind. So I am using some locally, local to me as in the farms in New Hampshire, um, Rommeldale Top. Um, it's from Long Ridge Farm. It's actually really nice. There we go, Long Ridge Farm. And it's their natural colorway. I have four ounces. Gonna focus. There we go. I have four ounces. I have two braids. This is the label from one braid. Um, two braids. And I'm spinning it fairly thin. I don't know if you can see this. Come on, focus. Focus. Nope, I'm still getting used to this webcam. There we go. I'm spinning it fairly thin. Um, I learned to spin a couple of years ago from a woman who, I don't think she's dyeing fiber anymore, uh, but ironically her name was Jessica as well, and she lived in Manchester, which is 20 minutes from here. Um, so this is what I have left of the first two ounces, minus what I've already drafted out to actually spin with. This is undrafted. And then I have, I'm still getting used to this camera, it's backwards. I have the second break to do. But I'm figuring two ounces is going to be one ply, and then this will be the second ply. I'm going to wind off of the spindle onto convenient um, toilet paper tube. Though I might use the paper towel tube. It's a little bigger. I'll let you know. Um, and so I'm working on the socks. Um, I'll probably finish the second sock pretty quickly um, because it's a sock and it's not it's actually less stitches than I normally do so it's gonna take me even less time to knit. I mean I knit, knit the other one in six days. If I can whip this one out by the 12th um or even the 13th then I can totally focus on other knitting for us the month. I mean I have stuff like the sock is like basically what I carry in my purse. Um but I have other stuff like around the house and I have a bunch of other things like I want to finish this huge lace shawl I've been working on for this is year three. I kind of want to finish it. But I have right here in this really cute bag that I had cust that I got custom made from my local yarn shop. I have a thing for foxes. And it's got blue polka dots inside. See? Tiny polka dots. But I have my Yes, I have it on straights because I felt like using straights. I hadn't used straights in a while. Um my hitchhiker shawl. This is my second one. I have plans to make a third one. Um, the first one I didn't get to keep. It was actually a sample I knit for a dyer I know. Um, Kate at 100 Ravens. Um, this is her Starry Night colorway. This is her yarn, by the way. This is the Starry Night colorway. Oops, I'm tangled. There we go. Here's the little tail end. You can see. Um, the color isn't showing up real well. There's some really nice deep, um, like here is a nice deep purple, but it's showing up a little blue. Um, you know, and then the yellows and everything. It's named, it's, the colorway is named after Van Gogh's Starry Night painting. Um, I knit the original Hitchhiker in her Acer base, which is a, um, DK weight, which is heavier than the pattern calls for. This one is in her Yakos base, which is fingering as called for in the pattern. And, um, I have two skeins. This is what's left of skein one, this is skein two, and I have a smidge left over from a third skein that I may or may not make, because I like my shawls big. If you don't didn't know I like my shawls big, I have my Rockefeller right behind me on the chair here. 
and my Rockefeller is quite large. Here, let me back up and show you. Yeah, it's big. The wingspan is wider than my arms can reach. See, I cannot reach the entire thing. Huge shawl. After that amazing camera work, which really wasn't that amazing, um, so I like my shawls big, and I like to be able to wrap them around my neck and to kind of scrunch them up and have them all warm and cozy. I get cold really super easily. Um, so after the socks, Hitchhiker's next, um, in terms of like carry with me project, because that will fit in my purse. I have a very big purse. Um, but in terms of like sit and really concentrate knitting, I'm focusing on my Granny Shane um, Shetland shawl. That's my focus. And once I finish that, I'm going to focus on my Even Star shawl, which has been on the needles almost as long. <laughs> I cast on these two lace projects within six months of each other, which if you know anything about really intricate lace, I'm crazy. And I freely admit it, I'm crazy. I also dug out um, my current cross stitch project. I hadn't, haven't worked on this in a while, but after the disaster brought on by the cat, I kind of want to finish it and get it framed up. Um, it's still in the hoop. I'm horrible. I leave things in the hoop all the time. It's such a bad habit. Um, it says, official crazy cat lady. I haven't finished the lady yet, but you can figure it out. And um, the pattern is by um, Raise the Roof. Um, they have a website. Um, they do not have a website on the card that was in the packaging. Um, yeah, no, there's nothing. Um, copyright 2010 Raise the Roof Designs. You could make photocopies that that would be wrong, plus we break thumbs. They have a sense, have a sense of humor. Here's all the, the floss. Um, I actually bought this, well, I didn't buy it. It was bought for me um, last year when I was visiting family. Not last year. In 2013. Oh, this is a long time ago. When I was visiting family in Florida. Um, so. No. It was last year. It was the beginning of 2014. So it was a year ago. And there's these cute little buttons you saw on when it's all done. Look at them, you get two little cats. And a hat, and what looks like a pincushion. I'm having a crap time focusing on this camera. Eh, yeah, that's better, you got it in focus. Cute little cat buttons. I'm a sucker for anything cats, I swear. Um, let's see, what else? Spinning cross stitch, oh. I follow a lot of blogs. And a lot, I follow a lot of crafting blogs. I also follow like XKCD and Mega Tokyo, which I spent a couple of years ago, I spent an entire weekend catching up on Mega Tokyo. Oh my god, so many back, um, back pages. It, that's a, like an online comic. Mega Tokyo is an online comic. So is XKCD. XKCD is, it's pretty funny. Um, but, you know, your mileage may vary on XKCD. And that website is literally X. K C D. That's what it is. Um, but I've been trying to find like after Google Reader shut down, I used to use Google Reader for all of my blog following and everything, all that stuff. But after Google Reader shut down, I haven't been able to find something I really liked. First I used Outlook because I have Outlook and I use it for all my email and stuff, but I didn't really like it. Um, then I tried Feedly, I didn't like it. I tried Feed Reader, that was better, but it didn't like give me the updates like immediately through the RSS feeds. Um, and then I realized that Mozilla Thunderbird, actually, um, you can use it for blogs. You don't have to use it for email. You can use it for blogs. So I downloaded the program, put everything in Thunderbird, and I love it so much better. The one thing it doesn't do that I wish it did is just give me a list. Sorry, I opened it. So, like, it's, like, white, like, white. Um, let me turn down the screen brightness. That's better. <laughs> um, one thing it doesn't do that I wish it did was give you everything, all the different blog posts in order by time. So like, you know how you get your email and it's not listed out by who sent it to you, it's listed by like when you got it? I wish it would do that, um, but it doesn't, but I can just scroll through and see who's updated and who hasn't, so it's not really that big a deal. And I normally don't get far enough behind that it's an issue. 
and I can just leave it open and running in the background and I'll get a notification. It'll ding when something goes off. So, anything else? Oh, I have a pattern. We are going to be doing at my local shop a um, catkin knit along. I can't wait. I have a cream and a nice, <coughs> excuse me, good audio moment. I have a cream and a nice um, emerald green I'm going to use to, um, for it. So, catkin. I've been wanting to make it for a while, and a bunch of us, I said, yeah, we all want to make it, so it's becoming an official, unofficial knit along at my local shop, which I go to every Friday afternoon, <laughs> which, and now I can't spend as much time there because of this job, but money, so, you know, that's always good. I think that's it on my list for today. Um, I'll probably get better at this, less ums. Um, I didn't realize how much I talked with my hands until I rewatched the video I put up last week, and I was like, oh my god, I talk with my hands. I'm still talking with my hands. Um, part of it, I think, is being Italian, and part of it, I think, is being Jewish, because both groups of people talk with their hands constantly. So it's just one of those things. I just I talk with my hands. I fiddle with things. I've been fiddling with my cuffs. I fiddle with my hair. Um, I fiddle. I talk. I gesture. Um, I laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> They're not that great, but you know what? I, I laugh at my own jokes. If, I'm not, if I don't laugh at them, who will? You know, I'm in an empty room. I'm by myself sitting here. So. Anyways, I think that just about wraps it up. Um, if you want to follow me, I am Sarah Nova, S-E-R-E-N-O-V-A. I'll put, if I lean to the side here, I can scroll some text here. Um, I'm Sarah Nova on uh, Ravelry and Twitter. I am Sarah Nova underscore Phoenix on Instagram. And I am Sarah Nova on YouTube. And my blog is myknittinglife.wordpress.com. Thank you for watching, and um, yeah, this um, this will probably be a regular thing, so I'll see you next week. In the meantime, I'll be putting up text posts on my blog. See you then.